Sheila, I'm ready. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'd like to start the meeting by recognizing the homeland of the 31st Nation communities of this area we now call the FERD, where we live, work, and learn. Important decisions that we make at the local government level can affect First Nation communities, Indigenous peoples, and organizations in many different ways today and into the future. So as part of our collective responsibility, I commit we continue to examine the work we do to ensure our projects, plans, initiatives, and discussions are guided by the principles of inclusion, collaboration, and reconciliation. With that in mind, I'd like to call to order April 11th, 2024 meeting of the Regional Corporate Services Committee. First item. Looking for approval of the agenda, addenda, and late items. I move, Mr. Chairman. Moved by Director Fascio, second by Director Horn. Discussion, none, all in favor. Close, if any item carries, this item. 4.1 is the draft Regional and Corporate Services Committee me meeting minutes of March 14th, 2024. Thank you. It's moved by Director Popo, second by Director Adamo. Discussion on the minutes. Questions? So none. All in favor? Opposed, if any. Item carries. Exciting. 5.1 is automatic vehicle location technology policy. There is a motion for your consideration. Thank you. That is moved by Director Ross, second by Director Dixon. Discussion? None. All in favor? Opposed, if any. Item carries. Exciting. 6.1 is Canada's new Forced Labour Act and reporting requirements. It's an information item. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Questions? Dr. Dickey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just curious, staff, uh, don't know anything about this, but if, if we purchase something from Southeast Asia, how would we have any understanding of what circumstances under which that, that might have been manufactured? Great question, Ms. Kinnaman. Thank you. I think I'll just turn it right over to our CFO, Kelly Lonsbro. Good morning, and thank you for the question. Um, so through the chair to Director Dickey, it is an excellent question, and it's something that we're looking to understand. Um, my my learnings on this subject are, are fast, um, as we're just learning of the new act. Um, it seems like what we will have to do going forward now, how are we going to know retroactively? That's what we're going to look forward to working with KPMG on. They've um, advised that they've gone through at least 30 reports so far for other clients. Um, it, it's really about the procurement practices and asking um, questions uh, about the supply chain through uh, proper procurement and RFPs. So what I envision is uh, after we do this report, um, we already had it on the work plan to do updates to our procurement policy. So I would expect that there would be some changes going forward on a go forward basis on how we would um, monitor that and prevent um, any unintended consequences of our procurement policies. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Director Horn. Related, um, I think it's fairly safe to say, Mr. Chair, that the, um, the cost of goods typically that are that are built offshore right now tends to be lower than a lot of things that are manufactured here in North America. And if we have to demonstrate awareness of the supply chain, my question is, might that cost us more ultimately in terms of what we actually acquire uh, materials and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, well, not services, but materials wise? Ms. Thank you. Through the chair to Director Horn, I would expect as much. Um, and I think as we as we learn more and it unfolds, um, we'll, we'll, the truth will come, but um, quite likely. Okay. Uh, other questions? Information item? Don't see any. Next item. 6.2 is the 2023 grant financial accountability reporting. Thank you. Questions? Uh, Director Ross. Uh, just a quick comment. In, in reading through all these projects, it's just, they're really, it's awesome to read about them. And they've just, you, we're not just giving money, we're actually building community and connecting people that, you know, might feel isolated. So kudos to everybody in, the, in these areas who's promoting this and supporting it. Thank you. Other questions? See any? Next item. 6.3 is financial plan 2024 to 2028 amendment for April. There's a motion for your consideration. 
Thank you. Let's move by Director Horn, seconded by Director Popo. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed to any item carries. Next item. 6.4 is the UBCM Excellence in Governance Award application. I move, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Let's move by Director Fascio, seconded by Director Spady. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed to any item carries. Next item. 7.1.1 is the do-it-yourself indoor air cleaner workshops. Questions on the information item? Will we get to see one here at the FERD? <laughs> I'm looking over at uh, our environmental services team. I would love to see one. I got a thumbs up. I can imagine what it looks like. I've been trying to picture myself putting one of these together. So uh, yes, I think it would be a great idea to have one here. Maybe we could have one here in time for the board. Is nice. that possible? Yes. Great. Excellent. Uh, other questions? <laughs> Comments? Uh, uh, Director Damo. Uh, thanks very much. Our Yale Ratepayers Association did this last year and they made a number of them in the community and it was a great success and they had a lot of fun doing so and uh, they actually work. So very good. Excellent. Uh, other questions or comments? Don't see any. Next item. 7.2.1 is provincial land management legislative updates related to the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples Act. Okay. Questions? Don't see any. Next item. 7.3.1 is the Vancouver Soaring Association seasonal lease. Thank you. That's uh, moved by Director Adamo, seconded by Director Smith. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed to any item carries? Excited? 7.4.1 is the Rural Transit Needs Assessment and Action Plan update. Thank you. Uh, questions? Director Horn. Having the difficulty at home getting kind of specifics on how this process will work in terms of planning transit improvements there. But I just wondered whether or not staff had any suggestion uh, now or off offline between meetings as to how we might um, speak with BC Transit about a connection or coordination of our municipal plans to the rural plan. I think that. Um, uh, we have an opportunity, uh, Director Pranger's not here today, but, you know, spoken with her quite a bit about what we might do to service out as far as um, Agassiz. But I, I just wonder from staff whether or not there's a way for there to be a, an element here where input uh, is sought from municipalities so that we can plug in as much as possible to the to the rural areas. Ms. Kenneman? Sure. Uh, through the chair to Director Horn. Um, I do believe that there is a municipal uh, FERD working group around transit, but maybe I'll just look to uh, Allison Stewart to comment. Uh, yes, uh, through the chair. Um, there will be, um, as, as the, the project develop, develops, we're still in the process of, of putting together the, the proposal. Um, the focus for the funding is purely rural and remote and, and that um, sort of focus. However, we're well aware that we do have to connect in with um, the municipalities. BC Transit will obviously be working with us on this as well. So we're not sort of going into this alone. And as these connections into like the city of Chilliwack or Abbotsford from a healthcare perspective, um, those are some of the things that we're gonna be talking about as well. Cause you know, it's folks coming down from the Canyon to get into either Chilliwack hospital or, or the Abbotsford Hospital that can be a real challenge or, or the Mission Hospital. So these obviously will be part of as we put together um, a, a, a working group or steering committee for the project, it will include those participants. Thank you, follow up, Mr. Chair, if I could quickly, uh, Ms. Stewart, that's, that's great to hear. I think another area that uh, you've been working on is um, indigenous representation in a lot of our civic planning and, and uh, regional planning. Certainly in the North Fraser, I know that um, Harrison and, and Kent have the Let's Mutt table. We also work closely with Langley, uh, Mathque, Sumath, and um, Scowlet, but would love to be able to include them in this discussion because along the North Fraser, there's a lot of disconnection. Buses are driving right by or transit opportunities are driving right by. Once The very few that we do have are not including um, the First Nations. So 
uh, would very much hope we can include folks from that. And I'll be speaking with Mr. Ringma from my other uh, in my other capacity, and I'll and I'll mention that there as well. Thank you. Any other questions? Comments? No. Don't see any. Okay. Next item. 7.4.2 is the Fraser Valley Regional District Regional Growth Strategy Bylaw Number 1706. Okay. It's moved by Director Ross, seconded by Director Dixon. Discussion. Don't see I'll just say huge yeah, congratulations to all the staff that have worked on this. Allison and you and your team worked extremely hard on this. Just want to recognize uh wasn't always smooth sailing throughout the process, but you made it look easy from our perspective. So well done. Um this document is already being referenced in a lot of the different uh meetings that I uh, have been uh, attending and certainly um, it's of note for a lot of our neighbors and uh, citizens that reside here in the, in the region so well done call the question all in favor those if any the item passes next item uh, 9.1 uh, is an item for information and correspondence uh, Director Horn, you have a question? I just wanted to uh, actually make a motion coming out of the letter that we invite this uh, representative from the ministry to do a presentation to our board. Okay, it's been uh, moved and seconded. It's on item 9-1. Uh, any comments or questions on this? Um, we'll work with staff to look at an opportunity for a delegation. Don't see any, call the question, all in favor? Close if any, item carries. Uh, any other questions on the information correspondence? No. Next item. Moving down to reports by directors. Thank you. Directors, be your opportunity. Uh, Director Adamo. Uh, thanks very much. Um, to the chair, to staff, just the information piece was participated on the weekend, last weekend, with a clean up the gadget that was started by a group of individuals in the Hope area that are looking to clean up some of the abandoned uh, living rough shelters along the Skagit River. And it was a real eye opener to be out there firsthand. I know that um, Ms. McConnick has done that in the past and other members here as well. But I wanted to thank some people that, that really came together, a group of volunteers that no one had known each other, just brought their trucks and trailers out. Um, M.L. Anderson provided a, a great deal of support with their tipping fees waived and some containers as well as uh, Jim Lasser from from one of our, our Tri-West and of course uh, Mayor Smith participated and helped out as well so the whole team came together and did something really special and brought a lot of people together to do some cleanups and this is going to be a necessary thing I think in the future for everyone in every one of our areas so trying to get some additional provincial and federal support for this is going to be incredibly important. So we're all acting as volunteers and supporting in what ways we can, but this is something that uh, needs a much bigger look at through our areas, um, especially in the rural areas where it's growing um, massively right now. But thanks very much to everyone there that participated and thanks to Mayor Smith and his team for helping put this together as well. Thank you, Dr. Dunn, Dr. Horn. Yeah, uh, some of uh, my colleagues here may real may have heard um, the city of Mission has been quite concerned about a 92 unit affordable housing building that wasn't funded in the most recent community housing fund tranche through BC Housing. What hasn't been widely reported is the reason why that project is particularly critical and my, why it has regional implications. Uh, in the last three or four years, Mission has lost two large apartment complexes to fire on a long-term motel, and we're about to lose another motel that's currently providing affordable and supportive housing uh, because it's going to be, because it's privately owned and the term of the contract and, ter and temporary use permit will both expire. The developer in this case was rather uh, an unusual, um, a, a bit of a treasure, to be honest, is the best way I would put it because um, not only did the developer come of his own volition to ask us whether we wanted them uh, to work with, at that time, Lookout Society to develop 
the 11-story building 100% affordably with a community kitchen, community laundry, and community meeting spaces beneath, uh, right in our transit hub. Not only was that unique, but when at the time the CMHC funding that they were counting on, we'll say got reallocated, uh, he didn't just come to us and ask us to exit him from the deal. Instead, he's worked in earnest to find a new partner. And um, we were rather astonished after the communication we've had with the Premier and with the Minister of Housing about the specific project. As Director Castle well knows, it's um, the only building in Mission that's 11 stories. And uh, it stands right next to the second tallest building, which is 50 years old and is fully 100% affordable housing too. That's, uh, that's how you build a tall building in Mission is you make it affordable housing. Um, the reason that this matters to this board and why I would ask of our colleagues that they help us in advocating for this is we're trying to do our share. Uh, I've met with Mayor Popoff, for example, in the past and recognized that Chilliwack is, and, and I can say the same for Abbots, for doing uh, uh, more than their share, or at least, at least certainly their share. And Mission is trying to do the same. We do not want for the benefit of our community or for the benefit of our colleagues here to have Mission people having to find their homes in neighboring communities. We will be very distinctly set behind if we do not get this building uh, funded. And it has become priority number one for us. So if you are in contact with the Minister of Housing or through your local MLAs, I hope that you'll help to articulate the reason why this is a major critical piece for us in terms of affordable housing in the entire region. And one last note is that we have a number of in-stream uh, builds going on right now, and this has sent a shockwave and a, a significant doubt through those partners and um, is going to affect overall our ability to fund affordable housing projects in the in the city. Um, so I ask for your help if you happen to be connected with our provincial representatives. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, Director Smith. Yeah, I just uh, uh, concerning the silver schedule there. I want to thank uh, uh, Councillor uh, uh, Peter Dama there for his work up there because yeah, it's definitely good it was off road because he took his trailer, put sides on it, so he can get three times more on it than you can legally. So it's a good thing it was an off road haul what he was doing, save trips that way. Very very well done. <laughs> uh, this year we're having Earth Day and Hope again for the fourth time. Uh, we set up a main street. We we collect paint and that it's absolutely a huge success the stuff we get. And this year we're reaching out with area A and B to include them in this year to come down and bring their stuff. And uh, we'll be doing pesticides and other things we haven't done. So it, it shows that people care when they show up with this stuff. When they, you know, there's stuff they've, lots of times some of the stuff, the crossbones came from the grandfather and still sitting on the shelf and they're trying to figure out how to get rid of it. So being a smaller community, smaller, it's rural like that. It's good though that we're doing it in a proper manner and uh, really appreciate it and pre appreciate the support from the chair of that too. So thanks. Thank you, Director Smith, Director Basio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick uh, blurb here. This uh, coming Saturday between 10 and 2 p.m. at the Memorial Hall in Harrison, we're having a, a health and wellness fair. So if you want to come out and go healthy, Please come and join us. We'd love to see you there. And um, if you bump into this guy with a gray sweater while you're walking around, you might get a you might get a gift. So you know, there's bottle of scotch. Uh, well, I don't know about a bottle of scotch, but <laughs> would like to encourage that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Director Passio. Other uh, directors reports. Uh, I see somebody. Oh, there you go, Director Siemens. Go ahead. Got you on. Got you on mute, uh, Director Siemens. We can't hear you. It looks like you're unmuted on my screen. Now you're remuted. Let's try again. Maybe it's is it audio on our side? No. No. Because of the freeze. Yeah. Yeah. No. Sorry, uh, Director Stevens. We can, if you want, we can take it, we can 
we can have you call in and we can try and uh, get you over the phone. It's all right. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Uh, Director Dixon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And just uh, to let people know that there is a climate fair this weekend. It's called the Rotary Climate Fair. It's the second um, second annual one. It's at the Chilliwack Landing Sports Center on Spadina. Uh, Saturday, 10 to 5, and Sunday, 11 to 4. Uh, last year was the first time that this was happening, and there was a lot of really valuable information, lots of good learning. Uh, I'm really highlighting it today because the Cultus Lake uh, Stewards class uh, we'll have a booth uh, this year, and um, they're pretty excited. They prepared a PowerPoint, and they're going to be talking about some of the research that's been going on in the health of Cultus Lake. And uh, and there really is some valuable information there because uh, the data and the research that we're getting from our scientists are showing that there's some concerns. So really looking forward to uh, taking part in that this weekend and hope for a good turnout. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Director Dixon. Uh, Director McConnick. Yeah, on April 20th, uh, Chilliwack Better River Cleanup will be out at Thompson Park for their annual River Cleanup Day. If anybody wants to bring out people and family for a good day, you're welcome to attend. Excellent. Uh, hey, I don't see any other reports from directors. Uh, some quick ones. So, I uh, had an opportunity to uh, meet with uh, a number of folks over at the Hills uh, last weekend. Thank you, uh, um, Mr. Urban and your team for uh, setting that up. Uh, it was an excellent opportunity to get out there and uh, talk to them about how we can further our relationship. And then shortly after that, got a chance to go up and visit uh, uh, Mayor Smith up in uh, his neck of the woods. And that's always a nice uh, uh, opportunity to see uh, all the exciting things happening in Hope. So uh, thank you for that opportunity. And then uh, I headed into the Council of Forest Industries uh, for uh, an uh, evening uh, meeting and icebreaker uh, last night. And we got a chance to see some of our, our colleagues uh, from uh, Northern and more forestry related uh, communities, but also a great chance to speak with uh, Minister Mercier, who is now involved with forestry innovation. And uh, note that uh, Director Pranger is uh, out at the uh, meeting right now, too. And I'll see her when I return back to Vancouver after this meeting. So um, lots on the go and uh, and uh, it's overwhelmingly positive. So good stuff. Uh, next item. Moving down to public question period for items relevant to the agenda. Uh, I see that we do not have any members of the public joining us here in person in the boardroom today, but we'll just ask uh, Jamie Van Ness uh, to check in online. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have no members of the public joining us online and we have not received any uh, questions. Great. Next item. Looking for a resolution to close the meeting. Okay. Move by the chairman. Move by Director Passio. Second by Director Ross. All in favor, close. If any, item carries. Can you just give us two minutes to set up the room.